Hello, I'm Mary Burgess, a local studies assistant at the Cambridge Collection, the local studies department of Cambridge Central Library. I'm going to be talking today about the history of East Road from 1950 to the present. It's one of the most changed roads in Cambridge, with very few buildings still remaining from 1950. I've taken 1950 as a starting point, as that when city planning for a post-war Cambridge really took off with the Holford Report, properly known as Cambridge Planning Proposals by William Holford and Miles Wright. This report was the first to raise the road widening and slum clearances which would change East Road so much in the years to come. This is a map of East Road 1950. You can see the Kite Cape area which gave the kite its name. Many roads have disappeared off the map like South Street which is now under Anglo Ruskin University and Gold Street under the Grafton Centre. Others have been altered or moved like Staffordshire Street and Fitzroy Street. Staffordshire Street was moved to the council housing estate in the corner of East Road and Norfolk Street and Fitzroy Street has been cut in half by the Grafton Centre. And here is East Road today. East Road was originally the boundary between two of the Barnwell Fields, the open plan fields to the east of Cambridge before enclosure. In the 1806 St Andrew the Less Enclosure Act, it is known as Gravel Pit Lane. I'm going to be starting with the north side of East Road, starting at Parker's Peace, heading up to the junction with Newmarket Road and down the south side past St Matthew's Primary School. Winton Smith started life as pork butchers, founded in 1910 at 26 Mill Road. They made things like pork pies and sausages, and soon became well known in five shops just in Cambridge. They had more across East Anglia with shops from Downham Market, Kingsland, and Berries and Edmunds. They opened their factory in East Road in 1919. The official opening was by the mayor on the 19th of November. It was formerly the Royal Tennis Court, and King Edward VII played there when he was a student. It is now Wellington House, an office block which was built in 1977. The Droll Hall was built in 1914 for three local territorial army units, the Cambridge Squadron of the Loyal Suffolk Hussars, the 1st Battalion of the Cambridgeshire Regiment, and the 1st Great Eastern Hospital Royal Army Medical Corps. It even had its own rifle range, although I'm not sure how safe that was. It was used for dance lessons in the 1950s and also used for children's vaccinations. The post office bought it in 1967. They used it at offices, but also for overflow sorting space when needed at Christmas. They moved out in 1988 to their current sorting office on the Clifton Road Industrial Estate. The drill hall was rather controversially knocked down in 1993. The county court was built on the site in 2006. The statue outside is two elements uniting to form a contract by Colin Rose. There's Burke Collins Quick Service Cafe, decorated for the coronation in 1953. They went over big cups of tea out of a massive metal teapot, corned beef sandwiches and steak and titney pies. They opened late in the evening and as a result they were very popular with both the evening students at the Tech and the people at the drill hall next door. Ronald Sir went there when he was at the Tech. He sat there and sketched my grandfather. I wish he had given him the sketch afterwards. It turned into Chan Super Kitchen, a Chinese takeaway which opened in 1968. It was one of Cambridge's first Chinese takeaways. On the left you can just see the sign for George Bowyer's motorbike repair shop that's round the back of his house. He went down the passageway to get there and it was in an iron shed painted green with a sign above the door saying George's shop. He mostly did engine rebuilds but also sold some spare parts. This photo is from 1974. And here is Claude Redderall's butchers in the middle of the picture. They were known for being friendly and always very smartly dressed, with white coats and a flower in their buttonhole. They were particularly popular for Christmas dinner, buying lots of chickens and turkeys at the cattle market. This is the former Alhambra pub, a name I always enjoy saying. It was actually built as a pub. The two doors lead to the two different bars and you might just be able to see the bunch of grapes over the window. Next door was 188 and a half, which is a sweet number I really like. They use fractional numbers before using A and B. This photo is from 1974 again, with Crook's Fist Bar in the centre of a shot. One side was a takeaway, with the other side for eating in. Every time I mention this place to anybody in the area, I always get told that they did crinkle touch tips. Apparently this is totally fascinating to small children. It's popular with the children after going swimming, and also on a Saturday evening once the pub's closed. This is Bill's Pets, which is a pet shop on the corner of Dover Street. It burned down in 1974, not long after this photograph was taken, and many of the animals were killed. It was formerly Sylvester's Ice Cream, a long-running family business who moved to East Road in 1913. You could have ice cream floats, knickerbock of glories, whatever you wanted. They also used to sell bricks of ice cream to take away with you. They had booths to sit in and used to be a popular place for children to go. There's a tin model of an ice cream cone sticking out of the corner of the shop. Louis Sylvester retired in 1969 and the shop turned into Bill's Pets. 
Across the other side of Dover Street is the tram shed, which is for the horse trams. The last tram in Cambridge ran on the 28th of February 1914 and was called by Corporal, so called because his ear had been shot on the Boer War. Every so often I get handed a bent halfpenny that had been put on the tracks on the last journey. During the 1960s it was used as a furniture store by Peaks Removal Companies. The tram shed is now home with the architect Neil Associates which who designed the refurbishment of this whole corner of East Road and Dover Street. The Cam Shoe Repair Service next door was formerly where the conductors paid their money in. The tram depot pub round the corner of Dover Street was actually the stable for the horses. You can still see the tram tracks in their yard. Cambridge Resale was started by David Carter in 1968. It sold a wide range of electricals, records and other second-hand things. They moved to 90 Mill Road in 1983 and shut down in April 2016 to move online. This is one of the few buildings to stay the same. It is now a fast food restaurant. This is a record bar, also owned by David Carter, but this was devoted just to records. It shut down when Cambridge Resale closed in East Road. This photo is a little later than most of the ones in this talk, it's from 1980s. The Dolphy Hall of Hairdressers is on the left hand side. Medcalf Sweet Shop sold sweets as the name rather gives away. It's run by two brothers. They also did their own hot roasted peanuts. They shut down in the 1980s and they were robbed. The shop was knocked down in 1987 and was replaced with student accommodation. It is used by Cambridge Centre for Sixth Storm Studies. The Baker's Arms pub started in the 1850s. It's changed its name a lot, being the Baker's Arms, the Baker's, the Baker's Yard. Since 2014, it's now the Duke of Cambridge to celebrate Prince William getting married to Catherine Middleton. It was noble art for all of six months in 2007, a rather odd boxing theme bar. Burke Collins was the late opening cafe in East Road, and Paul's Variety Fair was the early one. It specialised in cooked breakfast and was a favourite haunt of the post office. Often, if they were on strike, they'd be running operations from here. It turned into KFC in the early 1980s and have done well selling lunches to students at nearby Anglo Ruskin University since. The Falcon Pub is also another pub that's had a variety of names. It was originally known as the Wacken and Horses before changing to the Falcon in 1924. It's probably best known as the Boat Race, which was called from 1985 through to 2004. Lots of famous and not so famous bands played there. Since then, it's mostly concentrated on wine and cocktails, and is now another branch of the Snug, who also have another location in Lensfield Road. The Marcade next door was a former Eastern Electricity Marketing Department. It was set up as an indoor market in 1972, with a hundred lock-up stores selling sweets, toys, household items and all kinds of things. Apart from the store was the children was the joke shop. It burnt down in August 1975. It was rebuilt as the Beaumont Exhibition Hall after the fire. It was rather an odd idea, giving leisure companies based outside of Cambridge somewhere to display their wares in the city. It wasn't open long. It opened in 1978 and shut down in the 1980s to make way for Abbey Gate House, formerly Chili's Restaurant and now the British Heart Foundation Shop. Gold Street is one of the streets that disappeared completely under the Grafton Centre. It was open to Jack Baldry's Mineral Waterworks. The business started in 1923, taking over the former Cambridge soda water factory. He was non-conformist and didn't approve of alcohol. He always supplied bottles of pop and other soft drinks at the Zion Baptist Sunday School events. The company moved out of Gold Street in 1969 to Harvest Way before moving out of the city to Sawston in 1979. This is the White Ribbon Working Men's Hostel. It was set up in 1905 by the British Women's Temperance Association. Their symbol was a white ribbon, hence the name. It was run by the Salvation Army from 1932 to 1973. There was a fire in 1977 and it finally shut down in 1980 with the 23 residents being rehoused elsewhere in the city. Coulson's new head office is on the right in the picture as well. This photograph is from the 1950s and shows the original Coulson offices. Coulson's was founded in 1984 when Herbert Coulson went into business at the age of only 21. In 1989 he joined up with William Lofts and the business moved to East Road. The woodyard was on the other side of the road. It moved across when they were redeveloped for flats. My grandfather was apprentice at Coulson. I remember him telling me that he once put keyholes on the wrong side of ten doors and had to come in at the weekend to fix it. The Pelican Pub is on the corner of Nelson Street, another street that has disappeared at the Graffin Centre. The White Ribbon is on the far left, then Coulson's old head office. Like a lot of the smaller pubs in the area, the Pelican didn't have a spirit licence. It only sold beer and wine. No ghost here. When it closed, the licence was transferred over the Dracehorse Pub in Newmarket Road. Coulson's bought the Pelican to extend their yards next to the head office. This land was then later used to extend the Graffin Centre. It's where the multi-storey car park is now. Coulson's moved over to a new site in Cowley Road in 1988 as part of a swap with the City Council. The Working Men's Club was originally in Fitzroy Street, although it did stick out into East Road rather. It was founded in 1866 by William and Ellis Hopkins. 
There used to be a theatre upstairs, and it was also the site of one of the first women's suffrage meetings in Cambridge. It was knocked down in 1983 to widen the road. The club was rebuilt by Grosvenor Estates to the Grafton Centre after a long argument between the city and the county council about who should pay for it. The Britannia Inn was very old indeed. It was actually there before the road itself. It was built to line up with the original fill boundary, not the road. It just missed being knocked down with the Elizabeth Way bridge work and then it shut down soon after anyway in 1971. You can just see the pole of Albert Scott's hairdressers on the left hand side. He moved down to near the corner of Burley Street when they redesigned the junction. This photo of the junction of Newmarket Road and East Road is from 1962. Newmarket Road is going across the picture and you're looking down East Road. The railings in the middle of the picture are around the men's underground public lavatories. There's a rumour in my family that someone once bumped into King Edward on the way to the racist in Newmarket in those toilets, but I've no idea if that story is true or not. This is the Arena Transport House, another working men's hostel. It was at the very end of East Road in the 1950s, but got demolished to widen the road. Marlow & Co is a builder's merchant. They were originally from Bury St Edmunds. The Cambridge branch opened in 1947 and they moved to Nuffield Road in 1980. The buildings were later used in Mackay's Story Solution shop. They were knocked down in 2015 to be replaced by Mallory House student accommodation. Walton Terrace was a row of shops owned by Mackay's. They were quietly knocked down by boys in the Lee School as part of their charity week in 1969. They came down to be replaced with council housing on the corner of East Road and Norfolk Street. These two beer houses were next to each other. Both were knocked down in the 1960s. East Road used to be home to many more pubs than now, with lots more people both living and working close by. Another pub in East Road was the George IV. This photo was taken in 1916 and was knocked down in 1962. The empty space on the right hand side was called Sun's Timber Yard before they moved. East Road was quite lumpy at this point, you can see the slope in the road. This is because of the gravel pits. This is Barnwell Reading Room, which is the first branch library in Cambridge, opened on the 19th of July 1875. It closed after Mill Road Library opened in 1897, but after many protests from locals it reopened. It was indeed a reading room only, with newspapers attached to Victorian style desk around the room. It finally closed on 25th of March 1955 and was demolished for the council housing. Renbrow started out as a wireless shop, but then branched out into bottles as well. It was run by Colin and Morris Reynolds, a pair of brothers, hence the name. They moved to Mill Road in 1963 and also had a model shop in Fitzroy Street called Ren Models. Now this shop was indirectly the reason for the junction. The shop itself started life as wards in 1892. It was a bicycle workshop to start with, but then expanded into radio, televisions and other electricals. G.G. Ingram of her furnitures took over the shop when wards moved to Bradfield's Court. In 1979, the shop was taken over by Thakes the Cycle King. It was a bicycle shop run by Nick Thakes. When they closed down, they phoned round all the bike shops in the area, offering spare parts, and nobody wanted them. In the end, they contacted my father, who ran a bicycle repair workshop at Fordham Hospital, teaching patients how to service and repair bicycles. My father went down there in one of the hospital vans and collected the parts of the workshop. The shop was then bought by the County Council in March 1985 so they could knock it down to allow East Road to be widened. On the 30th of November 1985 there was what we would probably now call a rave in the disused shop. Three police officers were injured and 13 police vehicles were damaged that evening along with seven arrests. The shop was demolished very shortly afterwards. Some good did result with the City Council becoming interested in providing a venue for young people. After much debate on where this should be, it was eventually decided on the junction site on the former cattle market on the corner of Chamberlain Road and Hills Road. The space where the shop used to be is now the Garden for Thrive, a vegan cafe. It was formerly CB2 Cafe. Locus were the wholesale news agent for the area. All the London newspapers were delivered there and buttoned up before being distributed to local news agents. The company was based on the corner of Schoolhouse Lanes in 1861 and had both a shop and a wholesale premises next door to each other. They shut the shop in 1968 and moved the wholesale firm to Seven Place in 1977 before closing altogether in 1991. East Road School was one of the old schools of Cambridge and was founded in 1836. It was known as St George's after 1936 and was the only religious secondary school in Cambridge at the time. It was a secondary modern. The school closed in 1963 and the children and some of the staff moved to either Coleridge or the Manor. The Manor is now called North Cambridge Academy. St Matthew's Infant School and York Street Junior School moved on to the site and combined to form St Matthew's Primary School. They also took in the children from Brunswick School in Newmarket Road after that closed in 1981. The Granville Pub was formerly known as the Three Blackbirds or the Blackbirds Inn. The Andrews family ran it until it shut as a pub, but then they moved to the Grasshopper in Mill Road which also disappeared. The building was taken over by the Simon Community in 1968. They're known now as the Sirenes. 
They ran the place as a homeless hostel until 1976, when they moved out to Godville Place. The publisher demolished to expand St Matthew's School. Broad Street is now the home to Anglia Ruskin on one side and St Matthew's School on the other, but it's still not really very broad. You can still East Road in the background of the photograph. The building labelled Seacat on the right was originally H.C. Nunn's panel beating company. It was later used for Seacat's construction department. Swainlands was the other company in Broad Street, a sign writers. It was founded by James Swainland in Norfolk Street in 1876, before moving to Broad Street in 1926. The tiger was on the corner of South Street, another one of the pubs that have now disappeared. This was known as the Rough Pub early on, the Tigers at the Tiger. It turned into the haunt of lecturers and the tech later on. The last landlords were Nelly and Paddy Manley, who moved on to the Jubilee off Mill Road. It was demolished in 1974 so the tech could expand. This photo of the Zion Baptist Church is from 1907 and shows just how little the building has changed. The building on the right was founded in 1837 by Henry Batterscombe, who was actually a Church of England vicar. They ran out of space and the left-hand church was built in 1879. They received donations from lots of the great and good of Cambridge. The bank and Eden Lilly both contributed. It's a lovely building, well worth a look around for very much of its period. It's also the only listed building in East Road. The photographs from this talk all came in the Cambridge collection, with a local study department in Cambridge Central Library on the third floor, were free to access and open to all. The collection was founded in 1855 and it collects the history of Cambridge and Cambridgeshire. We have over 60,000 books, over 80,000 illustrations and photographs, printed maps from 1574 onwards, over 90 local newspaper titles, newspaper cuttings on 1,500 different subjects and much, much more. This talk was based on my book East Road 1950 to Now, 70 Years of Change in Cambridge, which was also for sale and for loan in the collection. Thanks for watching.